Hey everyone. So some of you might know that I recently got my Bamboo Lab H2D, uh, bigger build volume, dual extrusion. A lot of what I do is engineering and prototyping. Multicolor's fun on the X1C and the P1S, but really I just want to do soluble supports or breakaway support material. Uh, and I don't want it to have to switch through the AMS every time. It's just really slow. So having dual extrusion is really nice. I have this bad habit of running difficult parts as a first job on new printers. I don't know why, it just seems to be a thing. Uh, so a client reached out to me and wanted to print basically a shoe outsole. Uh, so not an insole, an outsole. And I'm guessing this is a prototype for a shoe of some sort and it needs to be printed out of TPU. Now, this part in general has a lot of texture and kind of some strange geometry. It's not flat. It's got some organic curves to it. So I thought, hey, why not use what this machine is designed for and run TPU with some other dissimilar support material. So I did some research online. Seems like people often use PLA or PETG as breakaway supports for TPU. And that's what I did. So I'll show you guys how I got this to print successfully and the tests and failures that I had along the way. And here's just a quick uh, run through of my setup. So I've got the AMS there because there's not enough space to put it on top. I am running Polymaker TPU 95A high flow just out of one of the poly dryer boxes. One thing about running TPU on the H2D is that you have to run TPU only on the right extruder and you have to actually take the Teflon tube out of the right buffer and then stick it out through the back. There's like a separate inlet outlet for running TPU through. Um, and that goes out here to the TPU in the poly dryer and you can see that's where it enters. It would have been nice if there was a more polished way of doing this. It feels kind of hacky to have to like unplug the tube, but stick it out of a hole and then plug that into TPU, but it works. So I can't really complain. Uh, it just feels a bit of an afterthought. Getting dual extrusion set up is pretty straightforward. All I had to do was go into my standard profile, set my support material to PLA, the base and the interface to both PLA. Now you can sometimes just use the same material for your base and then use your dissimilar support material for your interface. In my case, TPU is actually more expensive than PLA, so I just set both to PLA. Then I cut the part into quarters and sliced it into several different orientations to see what would work best. I also set the top Z and bottom Z distances to zero. I wasn't sure how PLA supports would work with TPU, so I started off with a simple test print that had some small overhangs and it ended up working great. It wasn't immediately obvious what orientation would be the best, so I ended up just testing them all. Because this is a shoe prototype, I wanted the outer features to come out as clean as possible. Most of the prints turned out pretty well, but the flat ones weren't that great. The shallow curves caused some visible layer stepping on the inside and the outside. And even though zero support gap usually leads to good results, the areas where supports touched still looked a little rough. The angled print ended up looking the best overall, but strangely failed partway through. I took a closer look at the model to figure out why the part was failing. It was immediately clear. There were some strange surface artifacts that lined up exactly with the layer height where the failure happened. This kind of thing happens a lot with industrial design files. Parts are often modeled with surfaces instead of solids, which can cause issues when you actually try to manufacture them. So I made a few tweaks to the file and tried again. 
This time, I felt confident enough to send the full part. This was the final print orientation, and it turned out great. The surface texture came out beautifully thanks to the angle and minimal supports. And the areas that did need supports worked surprisingly well with PLA and zero air gap. I was honestly impressed. This part probably had thousands of tool changes over its 20 hour print time. A part like this wouldn't have even been possible on the X1C or P1S because soft TPU can't be run through the AMS. And even if it could, the print time would probably be 20 hours or more longer just due to all the single nozzle switches that need to happen. I hope this video was interesting. It was pretty cool to print such a strange part like this. Um, and it was nice to actually use this machine for like exactly what it's designed for as the first print. And maybe this video will inspire you to try doing dissimilar support material, soluble support material. Um, I have had a lot of experience with that in the past and it's great. It's just so much better than using the same support material. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've done this before, if you're thinking about doing it, uh, any issues that you've had or even tips that you may have for me that I didn't cover, um, let me know. And hopefully I'll be doing some more soluble support or dissimilar support on this machine now that I have it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.